Hi, this is Lynn with Through Lynn's Lens, and um, today I want to share with you um, a personal story of how I heard an audible voice, and I believe it was the voice of God. So it began, the story took place, I believe, in the year 2008 or 2009. It was in that um, range, and I heard a voice call my name. It was actually I believe a call from God he was calling my name because at this time my husband worked at night he worked in um, the evening to the next morning so he would get off from work at about 7 a.m. at this time I had my sons and they were um, toddlers at that time and the voice that called my name was a deep voice. So my husband, he has a deep voice. And when I heard that voice, I was asleep. It was during the six o'clock hour. And I immediately popped up. It did not sound like my husband's voice, but I recognized that it was a deep voice. And so I popped up out the bed and I looked at the um, phone to see what time it was. And I saw it was six something. And I was like, no, it can't be him because he's still at work. And then it would take him, you know, time to get home you know, due to traveling, so I was like, okay, and I'm a um, person that loves to get sleep, so I don't always enjoy getting up early, so um, when I heard the voice and I knew it wasn't my husband, and I, I didn't see my husband, I knew, let me ask God, is this him speaking, and this was the first time ever I had heard God actually uh, audibly speak to me, so I said, okay, Lord, what is it? What is it that you need me to do? And then I just laid there in the bed and, you know, I just tried to turn my mind off, you know, and, and not think, but just, you know, turn my mind off and just let my spirit be open to hear. And he put this young man's name in my head. And I was like, okay, and I knew a young man's name by that name. Uh, I didn't know him personally, but I knew of him because he attended a church that some of my family members attended as well. And so then the next thing was um, one of my siblings popped in my head, my brother. And so I said, okay. And I sat there, you know, in the bed, laid there a little while longer, and I didn't hear anything else, you know, nothing else dropped into my spirit. And so I called my brother, and I was telling my brother, what was going on and while I was talking to my brother about this um, young man he was like yeah he's in jail and I was like really and then when my brother told me that it's like you know God downloaded in my spirit um, he's gonna get out on Monday and um, I believe this was like the early part of the week I want to say around like Tuesday Wednesday and so I was like okay I was like we need to go and tell him this message. You know, I didn't know the circumstances of what had happened or, you know, um, when he had tried. I didn't know any of that stuff. But all I knew is what I, you know, the Lord told me. So fast forward, I asked my brother to get in contact with the young man's mother. This young man at the time, I believe he was, you know, in his um, 20s. You know, maybe early 20s. So... I was like, I need to um, get in contact with him. You know, we need to find out details. So my brother contacted his mother. She told him that visitation was on Saturday. So I asked my brother, hey, can you go with me? I'm going to go and tell this young man this. So we went Saturday and visited him, and I told him. And, and God. So I'm like, okay, praise God. You know, I've given him this message, and I just felt that would help, you know, just encourage him. Uh, he was a first-time offender, I found out. And so Monday actually was the day. So that was a Saturday. And so what you remember, I told you that um, several days earlier, God told me Monday he was going to get out. So I found out from his mother that his um, court date was Monday. And I was like, okay. So, okay. So Saturday I went to go see him. Sunday I was on my way home from church and I, I had to make a stop. And I just remember God dropping to my spirit again. It's like I could feel it. He's getting out tomorrow. And all I did, I raised my hands 
where I was, and I said, praise God, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for hearing it. You know, I raised my hands, and I was just praising and thanking God. And so I was an expectation, you know. I had, um, I was really just feeling good about what God was doing in this young man's life. So Monday came, and I, I, um, I somehow I got in contact with his mother. Again, I guess they were my brother. And she told me, I saw you went to go visit him Saturday. And, um, and I was like, yes. And she said, well, everything that God had revealed to you and told you, it came to pass. She said he went to court today, which was my, on a Monday. She said because he was a first-time offender that they wiped the slate clean. He gave him, gave him another opportunity. Um, he, um, the lawyer fees were wiped out. I mean, he, he just, God just gave him grace and mercy that day. He extended to him. And I was like, praise God. And I was just like, Lord, I just pray this young man realizes that you show forth your grace and your mercy to him. This day, and I just and I told him when we were when I went to go visit him that Saturday, please don't you know do this again. When God allows you to get out this time, I said stay out. And he was like, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. But what happened is he did get into other um, situations that, and right now he's incarcerated. And you know I dealt with it. I'm like, Lord, you showed me, you told me, I told him, and you honored it, you did it. But what God was just teaching me is that we all have choices. You know, we, we make choices. And I just believe that um, that young man, and this is what I believe, like, you know, we're always in a, a fight, the spirit versus the flesh. And if your spirit is not built up with the word of God and being surrounded with people of God and, you know, just being led by God each and every day of your life, the flesh is by default going to it's going to rain. It's going to live. And that's where the enemy, he, he, he dwells on you living in the flesh. And so I just believe that God is still able to use this young man. And, you know, it's like uh, my nephew, he's a minister. And he said one time that with the GPS, sometimes, you know, how the GPS, when you make the wrong turn, it tells you rerouting. Sometimes, you know, God has a plan for our life to get to a certain place in our life, but you may have to be rerouted due to certain turns that you make in life. So I just wanted to just share um, that experience that I had with just hearing the voice of God and how God is still real. You know, God's not dead. I know we say that, but I just want you to know that God can still talk to us. He can prompt us because those of us that are believers in Jesus Christ, when we became saved, we accepted that free gift of salvation, that Jesus died for our sin. He paid the sin debt. His spirit, the spirit of God came on the inside of us and it made us new spiritually. And so we have the almighty God living on the inside of us. All we need to do is just be open to hear and to be led by him. And so if you have an experience where you heard the voice of God, felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you, I would love to hear your story. Please um, leave a message below or a comment below. All right, so until next time, next through Lynn's Lynn's video, I am Lynn Mallory, and I hope that you have an awesome day.